Welcome to the Bee-Centered Beekeeping Journey and this mini course on choosing your own nucleus colonies. When I talk about choosing your own nucleus colonies, I'm not talking about choosing a commercial beekeeper from whom to purchase those colonies. What I'm talking about is actually choosing the nucleus colonies you want to take with you when you get to the place where they're being delivered or to the commercial beekeeper's yard, wherever it is that you're picking up your nucleus colonies. Now, some of you may be thinking, I didn't even know you could do that. I thought you went to uh, the delivery point and they looked at a clipboard and they found your name and they checked off however many nucleus colonies you were picking up. And then they handed you the boxes and you just put them in your vehicle and took them back with you but you can actually inspect the colonies and choose the ones that you want. They're expensive these days, and it has become important to choose your own nucleus colony, and we're going to talk about why that's important and then how to do it. As you know, there are two primary ways to purchase bees from a commercial beekeeper. One is to purchase a package of bees, which is three pounds of worker bees in a screened box and then a queen, a new queen in a cage inside there with them. There's no frames, no comb. It's just three pounds of worker bees and a caged queen. The other way to purchase bees from a commercial beekeeper is to buy what's called a nucleus colony or a nuke. And that will have five deep frames of comb with worker bees a queen that's already been released and introduced to them. They have honey and nectar and pollen and brood, and they're already a going concern. Um, it's a very different thing from a package of bees. And we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages. We'll talk about the differences, I guess I should say, between those two in another little mini course. But this mini course assumes that you've already uh, decided to purchase nucleus colonies They'll come in a box like this, if you haven't seen this before. There will be five deep frames of bees. This one's empty, but there'll be five frames of comb and bees and a queen in the box. And that's what a nucleus colony is. So the why of choosing your own nucleus colonies. Nucleus colonies are really expensive now. So I don't think that uh, people who are purchasing bees can afford to forego this step. And why this is so important, I think is best explained through a couple of stories, a couple of things that I experienced personally. Several years ago, I was involved with the Central Colorado Beekeepers Association here in South Central Colorado, where I live. And there was a couple that started coming to our meetings. They were interested in keeping bees. They wanted to find out more about it. And they decided that first year to buy a single nucleus colony and they bought a hive and they set it up in their backyard and they came to the delivery point when a commercial beekeeper from another part of Colorado was bringing nucleus colonies through our region. And they got their nucleus colony and they took it home and they installed it in their hive. And about six weeks later, which is about exactly right in terms of the life cycle of honeybees, worker bees. About six weeks later, they called me and said, would you come and look at our hive? We just don't feel like the bees are doing very well. In fact, we feel like they're just dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. And we don't feel comfortable opening the hive and looking in there. And we don't know what to look for anyway. Would you mind taking a look? And of course, I, I didn't mind helping them with that at all. And I was curious to see what was going on. So I drove up to their small town here in our high mountain valley. And I opened up the hive. And inside the hive was just a handful of worker bees and the queen running around inside there. And I thought, oh my gosh, there was no brood no eggs, larvae, capped bees, no stores, nothing. Just six or eight remaining worker bees and the queen. And there were a few dead bees around, but not like um, a situation where they had been poisoned or something like that. 
Um, and so my conclusion was that they had received an unmated queen with this nucleus colony. So that made me think, hmm, it's possible to get a nuke and to have a queen as part of that nuke that was not mated or was not properly mated who never starts laying. And of course, over six weeks time, the worker bees that had been put together to create that nucleus colony had all just died of old age. So that's the first story. The second story is this one. Based on that first story, that experience, the next time I went to pick up nucleus colonies, I called the commercial beekeeper in advance and I said, hey, I'm coming to pick up 16 nucleus colonies for our uh, Beekeepers Association. And I just wanted to let you know in advance that when I get there, I want to open the colonies, open the nuke boxes, and be sure that there are eggs in each one. And he said, oh, that'll be fine. I'll help you do that. So I went down there. It was a bit of a drive and <laughs> got to his bee yard early one morning. And he's got stacks of nuke boxes on pallets. I don't know how many hundreds of nuke boxes he had set or created there. And, you know, thousands and thousands of bees in the air. And we start opening these nuke boxes to look for eggs. And he could spot the queen right away. It always just took him a few seconds to see the queen. He'd had a lifetime of experience um, spotting queens. And he'd go, oh, there's the queen. But I wasn't interested in seeing the queen. Based on that first story, that experience where I learned that an unmated queen can be put into a new nucleus colony, what I wanted to see were eggs. So we started pulling frames and looking for eggs. And in order to get 16 nucleus colonies that had frames with eggs in them, we had to open and inspect 24 of them. So one in three had a queen who was not laying. And to his credit, that uh, commercial beekeeper took a fat magic marker and made a big X on the top of those nuke boxes that did not have eggs, and he set those aside. And I took back with me 16 nucleus colonies that had a laying queen in them. So that is the why of choosing your own nucleus colonies to be sure that you have a nucleus colony with a laying queen. So, well, I'll tell you how to do it in just a sec. So now that you know you're looking for eggs and not just a queen, let's look at a couple of photos of what these look like because they are really, really tiny and they're a little bit difficult to spot. But after you've looked at these photos, I'm hoping you'll be able to recognize eggs and see them fairly readily in the comb when you're looking for them. But here's the how of choosing your own nucleus colonies. Obviously from the why, we know that it's not important to see the queen. In fact, finding the queen is uh, it's a wasted effort. What you want to find are eggs because eggs prove that you not only have a queen, but you have a laying queen. And that's what you want to see in your nucleus colony. So here's how I do it. Like I said, I call ahead um, and let the beekeeper know that I'm going to be inspecting the nucleus colonies and looking for eggs. I did that um, just a little while back after I'd placed an order for some nucleus colonies that I'm going to be picking up. I immediately emailed the beekeeper and said, hey, just wanted to give you a heads up. I do want to inspect the nucleus colonies and make sure I'm getting colonies that have eggs. And they wrote right back and said, sure, fine. You're more than welcome to inspect the nucleus colonies. And that was great. That was exactly the response I wanted. Any reputable commercial beekeeper should be more than happy to let you inspect the nucleus colonies and be sure that they have eggs in them before you take them with you. So I will go on the day that I'm to pick up my nucleus colonies and I'll take all my protective gear and I will wear whatever I feel like I need that day to be calm and relaxed and confident. It kind of depends on the day and uh, how the bees are acting and what's going on in the bee yard and all of that. But I put on as much protective gear as I feel like I need that day and I have my hive tool. 
in case I need to pry out some of the frames, if there's some propolis or some burr comb there. And then I wear prescription eyeglasses, but I will get a pair of over-the-counter uh, readers from Walmart reading glasses, like at 3.0 or 3.5, and I will put them on over my prescription glasses so that I'm really magnifying what I'm looking at. Because you saw how tiny those eggs are, but now you know what you're looking for. So I start pulling frames and holding them up in the light and looking for eggs with my magnifying glasses on. And I try to do this without my hood on. Uh, the screen really blocks a lot of the visibility. Again, it just kind of depends on the day. But if I see eggs in the comb, in one of those five frames in a nucleus colony, then I know that there's a laying queen in there, and that's a viable colony. That's a nucleus box that I want to take with me. So that's how I do it. I hope that encourages you to do the same. Um, you can do it, and uh, I just wish you the best with that.